Alright guys, it's Justin again uh, with another tutorial. This is going to be one of the first tutorials on my channel. I've been meaning to do uh, more. People ask me a lot of questions and stuff like that. And, um, I like to kind of share my knowledge with the community. Um, there's no sense in uh, you know holding all this stuff to yourself. Um, so I just wanted to kind of throw this out there. Um, a big question that I get a lot is about shading um, how I paint, how I shade, stuff like that um, my Instagram followers know that I put kinda like step by steps up for them uh, so they can kinda see the process um, but I haven't done a video or anything like that yet so uh, before I get into this I do wanna say that I don't know everything there is about shading I don't claim to know that there's everything to know or that I know everything about shading um, I'm not the best at shading this is just the way that I do it. Um, it works for me. I get along great. So um, I just wanted to share it with you guys, and maybe you guys can apply some of those, some of these techniques uh, to your own builds and modify them to your own liking. And um, you know, hopefully, it helps you guys out. So um, just like everything else in this hobby, um, one of the most important things uh, about painting and stuff like that, anyway, is to test your colors. So I got me a spoon, um, and if you look carefully, I've actually scribed some lines on it. Um, I've never scribed lines before, but I think they came out pretty good. So I'm really happy with that. <laughs> not that uh, not that I'm going to use this for anything, but this tutorial. But um, so, um, if you don't have spoons lying around, if you have like an old trash kit, uh, something that you don't really plan on using for anything else, um, or something that you just have spare parts to. Uh, one of my first shading tests actually was done on just some junk pieces. Um, and here's one of them. It's uh, when I was doing my blue frame. I tested it out on this uh, Death Scythe skirt. Um, I just had laying around. So, um, so I I've gone ahead and prepped this spoon up. Now, um, important things you're going to need for this project. Um, I have the scribing tool out. You don't need a scribing tool, but if you want to practice on a spoon, um, sometimes just going around the edges might not be uh, the best method. Uh, again, I can show you some tests from the blue frame. Um, you know, you can see that I shaded it, but you don't really get an idea of what you're doing unless you actually have lines and stuff to go around. So that's why I've scribed these lines on this spoon here. Um, now this spoon was already primed, but I'm going to go ahead and reprime it in a little bit. Uh, but the first step of this is since this is rescribed and all that stuff, um, I do recommend uh, at least giving a, a quick pass over your surface before you start painting. It, it helps remove um, mold release and it also kind of roughs your surface up just a little bit so your primer has a little bit of something to bite into so this is 1000 grit sandpaper it's really it's been used a lot but if you just light sand it doesn't really matter so all right there we go nice and smooth so um once you once you've uh, sanded your spoon, uh, it's ready for paint basically. So this is where you'll throw primer on, and you want to look for uh, whatever color you want to use as far as primer is concerned. But before I actually sit down um, and do any painting, I'm going to explain the colors that I'm using and why I'm using them. Um, a lot of people kind of I think associate shading with darkening lines and it, it's definitely that it's falsifying shadows on a flat surface that uh, to create the illusion that there are shadows there so you know for this for this piece here you would go down this section right down here in the middle and you would go along the the hard edges stuff like that so basically any small details and stuff like that you would you would line or edge basically with the airbrush as close as you can get and then you kind of blast over that with your with your top color. Um, and a lot of people seem to think that black and white is it. You know, you you 
you shade using black because it's the darkest color and you know I don't think that's necessarily true um, I guess once upon a time I might have thought that um, blacks and grays were the only things you could shade with uh, but some friends of mine um, kind of explained to me that you can actually shade using colors and it helps make your shading look more natural um, and I'm not going to go too in-depth with that, it's just the way that I do it. Um, if you're just practicing, there's nothing wrong with using black and white. If you like the way it looks, there's nothing wrong with using black and white. If you just feel like it, there's nothing wrong with using any color you want. It's your kit, if, as long as you're happy with the results. You know, nobody can say anything is bad, so. Um, for this example, I will be using the same colors I would normally use. Um, but I'm going to try and explain it in a way that uh, you can easily figure it out. So, one of the things that I do is kind of unnecessary. Um, I lay down a base color before I lay down my shade color. Um, the only reason I do this is because this color will affect the final color. So, um, all of my shaded pieces have three colors on them. Um, this is my, what I use typically for whites, um, this is a new kind of concoction I've come up with, um, so, my first layer for this, uh, and this is for the build strike, so, uh, my first layer is Mr. Color 323 Light Blue, it's a lacquer paint, um, after I base coat the entire piece, I don't just, um, you know, go in certain areas with it. I cover the entire piece with the light with the light blue. Next is uh, Mr. Color 328 Blue. It's also a lacquer. Um, this is a really really dark blue, as you can see, and I use that to hit all along the edges, so entire the entire outside of the spoon, and then I go as close to these lines. Well, I overlap the line, but I get as as close to the line without like bleeding and and going all over the place as I can get. And then finally, you can see this is almost out. Um, I hit it with 310 white, which is a pure white. Um, I did an example. Let me grab it real quick. I did kind of an example using these colors and a very, 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 very light blue. Like, think um, maybe one drop of blue, like this blue, to five to ten drops of white. It, it almost looked white, and it came out still too blue for my taste. Um, so, I decided to just use the pure white. Um, because the blue actually, it still affects it. Uh, and you can still see that it's it's not a pure white but it does appear white when it's straight on with the camera so it gave me the effect that I wanted so using these these three colors um, I have created this effect on this piece um, the shade is really subtle except for on the end here I need to fix that uh, no camera what are you doing there we go so, <clears throat> when the light hits it a certain way, you can see that it's blue, uh, but any other time it appears really white. Um, it's not something that I learned on my own, it's not something I learned through experimentation, it's just I got some suggestions and advice from friends, and uh, I prefer to shade using color than to use blacks and grays. That's just the way I like to do it. Um, so, I will probably do a little breakdown at the end and explain kind of what I would do with each color and go from there. But, um, for right now, we're just going to stick with the whites. So I'm going to go ahead and do a cut, and we will go into the, uh, the first step of painting the spoon. Uh, I'm going to prime it off camera because that saves time you know how to prime. So, I'll see you guys in a second. Alright, so the first step in this whole process, obviously, is going to be uh, priming your piece. 
as you can see here here's my panel lined spoon uh, it's been primed uh, it's dried it's touch dried it hasn't cured but whatever um, so uh, the surface is fine and this is where you would make sure there's no imperfections or anything like that go back sand whatever and make sure you're ready to actually paint so um, the next thing that's important is uh, making sure you're using the right tools for the job so um, this is my uh, Badger uh, Patriot 105 um, this is what I use for base coats priming metallics top coating stuff like that and this is my Badger Renegade Velocity this is what I use to shade and to blend and stuff like that because it's a smaller tip and it gives me a little bit more control so I can I can put the paint where I want it more easily with this brush than with the other one so since we're just base coating um, we're gonna go ahead and do that with uh, the Patriot that's fine it it doesn't really matter because I'm just covering the entire piece uh, but again if you if you were planning on doing fine work uh, recommend using something with a smaller uh, smaller nozzle so I'm gonna go ahead and get my thing that's dry up I don't need very much just a couple drops so I'm just painting a spoon now just like anything else you want to paint this uh, you know you want to try and pick a direction and paint in it so I'm going to try and paint this way so I get a nice even coverage over the entire surface And there you go. You can see the entire surface has been covered. Um, you can still see the panel line, so I didn't really flood the piece. Um, and it's one uniform color. Uh, now this isn't super important. This part is entirely optional. Um, like I said, I like to do it because this color will influence the final color. Um, and it will kind of add a little bit more vibrancy, I think, to um to what you're doing so let me make a cut and I will um, come back and we will load up the next color all right I'm back um, now I forgot to mention one thing in the last section um, when I laid down my base coat I was spraying somewhere between I'd say 12 and 15 psi um, that's typically the, t unless I'm spraying like a high shine metallic, typically I'll stay in that range. Um, or if I'm shading, I'll kind of lower it a little bit. So, for my lines, I'm going to go ahead and bring it down to 10, just to make sure that everything goes on smoothly. Um, now, for the first step, I laid down, like I said before, 323 light blue. For this next step, mix this up a little bit. I'm going to lay down 328 blue. These are all Mr. Color paints. I can get the bottle open. There we go. All right. And bleh. and we literally only need like two drops of this. So, get that in there. Make 
sure that it sprays the way it's supposed to. There we go, I made a little smiley face. <laughs> um, now, uh, we're going to take our spoon again, and we're going to trace the outside edge. We're going to trace the panel lines, and then we're going to go back and make sure that everything's nice and even the way it's supposed to be. So, take this clip off because I don't need it. I'm trying to keep everything in the viewfinder so you guys can see. Now the reason that you spray at a lower PSI is so you can get closer and you maintain a better control. So. So there's the first part, just get the outer edges, then you go ahead and get your details. And the easiest way to do this is to start real low and just kind of build your color up. That way, if you make mistakes, you don't flood it with color. Because if I messed up down here, I'm, I'm tracing this line, I just go, oops, you know, I can't go back. If I'm doing it real light, I can make sure that I don't trace over that line again. So. Real slow, just take your time and make sure that your lines are nice and even. So that's about where I need or where I want this to be at, so I can deal with that. And look how much paint I got left. And that was just like three drops. It's just it just keeps going. There we go. So let me make another cut. I'll come back and we will lay on the last color. Alright. Now this last step is I think one of the harder steps. Um, this is where you even out your shading and you blend everything to where you want it. So I don't have very much in here, which doesn't really matter at this moment, but I have enough to, to do this spoon at least three times I'd say. So let's go ahead and get this. Um, I've brought my pressure back up to about the uh, the 15 mark and um, yeah so um, this step is where you're gonna just lightly go over in one thin layer as even as you can to, to get a uniform color and then if it's where you want, stop. If it's not, blend it again until you get the desired effect. So, you want to pull back a little farther than usual this time, and you just miss the color on.
until you get complete coverage. So, if you want a very, very, very heavy shade and you want your base coat to seek through, you probably stop about there. Oh, well, I guess I underestimated how much paint I had. Ha! <laughs> Joke's on me, I guess. Well, I still have enough to do this. I just took more paint out of the cup than I thought I would use, so... Let's go ahead and mix this up real quick. We'll just use the rest. Now I'll mix up a new batch. Okay, so so that's about you know what would one what one layer would be. It's just covered. Um, next, you just do it again. And again, it's less visible. Um, you can still kind of see it, so this would probably be about a mid. And then let's go ahead and give it one more quick pass. And that's about where I would put it if you wanted it to be a really subtle shade. Um, you really only see it when the light hits it a certain way. Um, it looks really, really nicely, you know, covered. Um, there's a couple specks here and there, just dust. But for the most part, it's nice and clean to where it should be. So. Um, this is the part, this is the, the stage where you would go ahead and gloss over it and do your panel lines. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that. Uh, I think I'm, I might end this tutorial roughly here. So, um, actually I still have more to talk about. So, uh, I'm going to make a cut and I will be back in a second. Alright, so that's the way that I do my shading. Um... It's a little different, it's a little weird, I guess, um, but it's the way that I like to do it. Um, my entire Garadoga build was shaded this way. Um, for the greens, I went ahead and, and base coated everything with brown, and then worked my way into a green. Um, for reds, I also used brown, so all these were done in brown, and then worked up to red. Um, for yellows, I recommend using an orange or red, depending on the, the kind of final color you're looking for. Um, the transition, I guess. Blues is just, you work with blues. With whites, I use blues. Um, but I wouldn't let that kind of discourage you from using blacks and grays if you want to. Um, the, the entire painting process is up to you. Um, do what you're comfortable with and do what you have accessible to you. Um, you know, I, I have a lot of paints, a lot of different colors. Um, so, I have a, a lot of room to experiment and try different things. But, um, this is how I get the results that I get. Just by uh, layering different colors. Um, so, I, I would recommend that always, 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 always uh, test out your colors on a spoon first um, because nothing is worse than laying down pink colors and not being satisfied with the results and having to strip and redo the entire um, 
near the entire piece. Uh, it gets a little annoying, it gets a little old really quick. Um, it's not fun. So, um, that's it. That's all I got, I guess. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave me a comment down below. If you have any, or you can you can message my Facebook. You can, uh, you know, message me just about anywhere. I will get to you as soon as I can. Um, if you want to see any other tutorials, please message me um, or leave me a comment here. I will do my best to. Um, kind of do tutorials for whatever I can do. Um, if it's something that I've done or that I know how to do, uh, I'll do my best to make tutorials. Um, it's something I've been wanting to do for a while. I've wanted to put more um, content on this channel to help other builders and stuff like that. Um, and uh, thank you guys again for watching. Uh, if you guys stuck through the whole thing, uh, it's probably going to be a little long. Uh, but with any luck, it won't be too bad, um, and hopefully somebody will learn something. Uh, you know, that's that's my favorite thing is teaching other people uh, my techniques and the things that I've learned and people have passed down to me. So um, I like to share that knowledge. Um, so again, like I said, if you guys have any questions, if you guys have any suggestions, uh, comments, uh, anything like that, leave them down below or you know, message me wherever and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.